Uh, recently, an Ubisoft director said, gamers need to get comfortable with not owning games. Uh, this quote comes after it comes from the launch of Ubisoft Plus Premium and Ubisoft Plus Classics launch uh, recently, uh, which in of themselves is a little bit concerning. Uh, we've long rallied uh, for our viewers here to continue purchasing physical media. Uh, with this announcement from Ubisoft and maybe them tipping their hand a little bit, uh, what does this mean for the future of Ubisoft titles? I, 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 I know what they're trying to do. I, I get mm -hmm. what they're trying to do. And again, we have, we've, we've been down this road a long time. We are both big fans of always having the option to buy physical, non-locked, yeah. non-net on all the time. I don't understand physical the media. idea of region locked DVDs, by the way. Yeah, I've never understood that. Neither do I. Um, I. First off, as somebody who actually has done the the subscription model before and i like it to a certain degree and i'll explain why in a second and i've actually talked about this on the show before as somebody who like the likes that sometimes i don't like the way that they're putting this and i think that the way that they're putting this out there is stupid and again going back to something that that john and i used to talk on the show all the time is and actually you'll be able to speak to this really well these video game companies need to get their comms departments like working <laughs> again. Um, yeah. And, and toward the end of this topic, we're going to touch on another th stupid thing. A game dev said, um, <laughs> I remember this. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to I do the actual quote here from him just to give some context because go ahead. this was taken by IGN and several other articles. Pretty. I mean, I know what they're trying to do. Read between the lines, but the, 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 the full quote from Philippe Tremblay, Let's be Who's the fair, director then. of subscription at Ubisoft. Yeah, we'll be some, we'll be fair, but then we're going to tear them apart. <laughs> <laughs> the quote is, one of the things we saw is that gamers are used to, a little bit like DVD, having and owning their games. No shit. That's the consumer shift that needs to happen. They got comfortable not owning their CD collection or their DVD collection. That's a transformation that's been a little bit slower to happen in games. As gamers grow comfortable in that aspect... You don't lose your progress. You, if you resume your game at another time, your progress file is still there. That's not been deleted. You don't lose what you've built in the game or your engagement with the game. So it's about feeling comfortable with not owning your game. That's the full quote. <laughs> uh, and he goes on to say, quote, Streaming is also a thing that works really well with subscription. So you pay when you need it as opposed to paying all the time. Yes. These are facts question mark so here's again where i'm going to say i agree with an asterisk um and it was actually gator pete who got me on to this thing right which was the xbox version of this right mm -hmm. and i used it to to great success right <laughs> great success there are times where i would just go in and i didn't have to download and install and it would let me stream the game for an hour just to see if i even wanted to mess with it Right. And for certain games, that was a great feature. Having that ability to go, you know what? Let me just try this for an hour and see if I even want to bother with it is handy. And the fact that in order for me, especially with the, the death of rental, right? It's not like when we were kids, when you could run down to the blockbuster and your sole monetary investment into it was the dollar mm. 99 you paid for the weekend rental. Right. Right. You either have to the wait try before you buy kind of methodology, right. right? You either have to wait for a steam sale or you've got to, you've, you, you're in these subscription models. So there is a benefit there, right? In mm -hmm. that games, 70, $80, which I'm actually fine with. I actually think they need to be more expensive. That's a whole other topic. Right. Um, but I also would like to see the ability to ensure that you don't ever lose that game. Yeah. Right. Um, if you do purchase it. Right. And so what I don't want to see is a, a world where I can't buy it if I don't want it. Which is where I think they're trying to get to. They're trying to, to push as hard as they can, as fast as they can, to a games as a service model. And I again, I understand it. And, and I think it's particularly pronounced on PC, where nobody mm -hmm. gets any cut for online play. Yeah. Right. I... Uh... 
I, I want to, I'm going to go here with a, an example um, that my spouse will appreciate me using, but I would like to use TLC math. Um, it is how you go from selling 10 million records back in the nineties uh, and still be broke as hell Yeah, as a musician. Uh, and I bring it up because somebody in the chat brought up, there's a difference between a 15 or 16, or 10 or $15 CD and a 50 to $75 video game. Um, the amount of money that you've got to pay as an artist and things like that, and the amount of money that you get out of royalties and things like that from each of the sales, by the time everybody's money gets taken away from them, you get about 10 to 15 cents, maybe a dollar for every CD sold. And that was the, that was recording contracts back in the day because of licensing, marketing, mechanicals which is paying all the people who play yep. on the record for you and things like that you know the labels cut the publishers cut the actual money that it takes to print and then ship and distribute the cd everything like that um so nobody was making a lot of money when it comes to making music sometimes and in a group like tlc when you got to then split the money three ways between three performers um you don't make a lot of money with that Nope. You fast forward to this concept that Alex is talking about where it's, you know, $60, $70 a game kind of thing. And a standard game dev's <laughs> salary, mm -hmm. depending on where they're at in the world, right, is anywhere, you know, can be upwards 75, 80, six figures kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because you should be paid a living wage depending on where you're at, right? Um, I certainly see six figure you know, dev salaries and things like that, uh, and pushing a hundred thousand, you know, here in Seattle, because that's kind of what it takes to, uh, mm -hmm. takes to live around here, sadly. Um, so when you start having that much cash flow going out, because it's not just a single dev that's doing this kind of thing, right? You know, that much cash flow going of out. Them. On, on AAA titles, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're not making any money off a lot of these kind of games. And your one-time purchase from that is not going to fund anybody else's stuff. And you're going to continue to see all the layoffs, which I, I think we have gotten to 31 to 3,300 layoffs in the gaming industry in 2024 already. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So the other, the other thing that I, I, I caution the video game industry against, and again, I understand, I understand their thought process and, having spent a lot of time in the room with business people and executives, the executives are going streaming the future, streaming the future. <laughs> Cause they're looking at movies and television. The, the difference here is this. If you make a Barbie or you make an Oppheimer, you make a fast X, right? You get yeah. that initial jolt of cash flow, right? From the theatrical release. And mm -hmm. then it goes to streaming, right? Right. So you've got, VOD, which again is another cash injection when you put it up for rental, right? Through the paid video on demand. And then it goes to your streaming platform for free streaming on that platform. And I say mm -hmm. free in air quotes. Games don't have that. They don't. Right. That's you, why you see all the, the DLC and microtransactions and and we know live service things and stuff like that that we have in there, right? And the reason there is a total of two, and I'm I'm gonna hold my fingers up here, two. Entertainment streaming services that are actually pulling down a profit right now. Of all the streamers out there, Paramount Plus, Netflix, Hulu, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Disney Plus, mm -hmm. only Max and Netflix are profitable. That's it. Right. Everybody else is hemorrhaging cash because it is not cheap to maintain these server farms. I've mm -hmm. been to them. Okay. I've been into the internet. Okay. The, I come to you from the internet. I have literally been inside. Okay. In addition to the immense amount of cash it takes to build these facilities, right, and equip and, them. And that's before you get to the amount of money it takes to actually make the content. That's before you've made an ounce of content. You have to build yeah. the facility. Then you're, you're renting space. And you got to remember the AWSs of the world, the Microsoft Azure Cloud, whatever the fuck they're calling themselves this week, <laughs> Google Cloud, etc., you, you've, you've, they have to charge based on the fact that it costs them billions to build these facilities. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something right now, power, 
power is not cheap. Okay, it takes they get they get, they get credits on all that. They shit. do, but it still is one of their big outlays. Okay, no, it's not. The salary for everybody working there outpaces the amount of what? money that they spend. On I power. was about to get to the salary. Right, <laughs> you've got the people that, they have manning the server farms the, outweigh the, the amount tech of money people, they spend on the power, security yeah. people they have to pay to yeah. manage these facilities. The facilities guys, right? This is not cheap. And so if Ubisoft thinks they're going to get into this and just have this concern, you know, consistent revenue stream. And I understand from a business perspective that that joy of having a consistent, steady revenue stream. I believe me, I understand mm -hmm. on multiple levels. I don't think it's going to work the way you think it's going to work, Ubisoft. The only reason Microsoft, some of the other ones can get away with it is they already own this. Like, it's already theirs, right? Microsoft already yeah. has the infrastructure in place. They've already built it. They own it. It's theirs, right? Um, well, so I want to I wanna answer something that just came up with in chat. Is they said, back in the 80s and 90s, Nintendo and Sega survived without subscriptions and microtransactions. I know the tech is different, but why can't they do it now? It's not just that the tech is different. It's that the expectations have changed. That too? The expectations from, from players and things like that have changed. And we have opened the Pandora's box of the Call of Duty methodology of live services. And thus they have made bukus of money doing that. And you cannot close that Pandora's box anymore. Um, Ubisoft and things are basically saying, much like Nintendo... If you want to play Nintendo, old Nintendo games, like the legit way through Nintendo on your Switch and stuff, you've got to pay a subscription service to Nintendo Online. You cannot just go buy a Mario game and stuff like that anymore. You have to have the online service as well. Um, and just like we talked about, you have to have the online service to, uh, to pick up, you know, the N64 controllers and all that kind of stuff for it. Because um, what they're basically saying is you're renting this game from us for as long as you have the subscription. And I think what Ubisoft is trying to do here is to say, all of our games are subscription services now. And if that gets away from bullshit DLC and microtransactions and gating content behind a premium battle pass and all this other crap that we see that is kind of holding back AAA games in, in a way, like, it's really holding back the the financials are what's holding back a lot of these things. And I, the if we saw a lot of that stuff go away and they basically just said, look, we will give you everything if you pay $10.99 a month or something. And then if you don't want to play those games anymore, cancel your subscription, come back to us when you're ready. And some games have done that. Uh, SWOTOR did it. Right? Where when they went free to play, they said, look, you can have this free to play and here's the things that you can do when you're free to play, right? But if you continue your subscription, we're going to give you a bonus. Mhm. Mm right? Here's the other thing that I want to bring up. I'm bringing something up here. Video games have not scaled as far as the cost. They have not scaled with inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay? Full stop. And this is something that I warn I've, I've talked to players about for a long time, okay? It has not scaled, okay? A lot of these games were $60 in 1991, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if you want to know... In fact, we'll do it. Give me a give me a year, Mallow. Let's say ninety two. Yeah, let's do ninety two. So January ninety two, the equivalent of sixty dollars, right? If if games had scaled with inflation, mm -hmm. they would be a hundred and twenty nine ninety nine right now. Sounds about right. Also, the fuck with inflation in America. Come on now, but come on now. What I'm saying is, is that part of this is on us. Um. Uh, kind of bring I mean, it to be, to be, I mean, when you, here's the way, here's the way that I look at games though, is I look at games, I evaluate them on enjoyment per hour. 
And I do the same thing. You and I have had this discussion many times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I look at it from a perspective of Starfield would not have been a buy for me at all. Um, I did it on subscription with my Xbox Live. I had Game Pass. Uh, I did too, <laughs> which I'm very glad I didn't have to pay for. Nope. Cost um, me all of my $15 monthly subscription. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing is that, like they're looking at the Xbox Live model and they're saying, okay, Xbox can get away with it for the X number of things. Now, Xbox has a much bigger library than Ubisoft does. Yes. Um, and they have a lot more types of things. And the Xbox is in more homes where it makes more sense because that's why consoles still make sense. I don't, mm -hmm. you can at me PC Master Race all you want to. Uh, I, I game a lot on my PC and stuff, but I still think consoles make a lot of sense. When you think about a lot of the casual, quote unquote, gamers out there that, you know, we picked up, you know, uh, Forza Horizon that I could play with my little uh, because it was on Xbox Game Pass. I and mean, it turns out to be a, a fun game and a, and a well done game and stuff like that. Um, but we wouldn't probably have had to buy it if we had to buy two copies of it at 120 bucks. Yeah, for more. sure. Right. And and I think that's the thing that is is really kind of holding it back of like, you know. Like I said, Ubisoft Plus Premium, I think, is going to cost $17.99 a month, which is still $2 more than uh, Xbox Live's uh, version of it, which I think is overpriced, because there's not an Ubisoft game out there that I'm willing to pay $17, $18 a month uh, to do. Far Cry 5, we, we, we got a lot of viewership off of Far Cry 5 and the shenanigans that we could do with it. Um, I'm sorry, Far Cry 6 is not worth paying that, right? Um, I, I've been enjoying Far Cry 6. It is it's not a great game. Um, they they just didn't do enough of it, and none of the Assassin's Creed games right now are enough to want to like pay that per month. No, and have to like quit it kind of thing. I got Mirage for Christmas because it was a return to form, and I wanted it to see mm -hmm. what it was going to be, and it was worth it. Um, kind of bring this back to the beginning. Um, this and and kind of the stuff coming out of the Last of Us devs. Where are these guys' communication departments? Like, <laughs> do they like you worked in this in this area? Do they not prep these morons for interviews? They do. Uh, and it, sometimes or are they just it doing a bad job? <laughs> well, I think... Or have they I fired mean, all is, their communications people? No. It, well, it's in the PR side of things is sometimes you get a... Sometimes you get an exec out there who just doesn't think before they open their mouth. You can prep them all you want, and they still don't quite, you know, they still don't quite stick to script when they get out there. Um, and I know what he was trying to say with this. That's why I wanted to include the full quote. I get what he's getting at is that it does make more sense in some ways to do a subscription service mm -hmm. down the line. But I, I caveat all of that stuff that I said earlier about if they got rid of the DLC and they got rid of the battle passes and all this kind of stuff. And they just did the Xbox live model where they say, here is a full game and here's several full games. Hundreds. Yeah. Yeah, for fifteen, sixteen dollars a month kind of thing. Yep. I would be like, I'm buying into this kind of thing. The problem is, I don't think they would stop there. No. I well, think they would gonna... have a subscription service and then they'd be like, and then you can buy all these skins and outfits and weapons yeah. and all this stuff so they can maximize profit and stuff like that. That's the problem that I have with this particular model that they're pitching with it. It's not that a fact that like I can subscribe to any gaming service that i want per se but then i would have to get like they're trying to build brand loyalty with the publisher which i don't think is the same as trying to build like brand loyalty with like peacock or versus max versus amazon for instance or something like that right like mm -hmm. you can't do that <laughs> your your library has to be perfect like again like xbox um, well, Xbox only wins because of how many titles they throw on there. Yeah. Well, and they pay they and we saw that in the leaked documents during the uh during the uh during the antitrust stuff was how much they were paying. Mm -hmm. And what the pay structures were like, and that was really interesting. Yep. Well, let us I know. I want to bring up I, no, Go ahead. before we before we jump cuz I do the chat brought it up perfectly here because I'm a former WoW player. I say former because I just don't quite have enough time. Mm -hmm. Even though Dragonflight has been a fantastic return to form for World of Warcraft. Um, they even had to go back and go to the, to the player base and say, you know what? We're going to give you all this content. We're going to give you all, we're going to give you finally a good world of Warcraft game with, 
you know, and they've went to the drip mentality of content where we're going to give you chunks of content and we're going to spread it out over the year. And, and they've got a long road cycle and stuff like that. They had to learn the hard way that if you're going to, sub- if you're going to pay for a subscription service, you better be pumping out content. And I don't necessarily believe that the Ubisofts of the world and stuff like that at this moment in time, have enough titles and enough things down the coming down the pipeline to warrant a subscription service. And I think a lot of them are not, gonna be like not that. individually. No. No. And nope. that's where I that's where I think the Xbox comparison why Xbox wins versus why we have a, 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 a you know kind of reaction to like an Ubisoft maybe trying to do the same thing. Yep. All right folks, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Are you are you a fan of like Xbox Live? Do you like subscription services or do you just want to buy all your games on a bloody disc? Let us know down below. Thank <laughs> you.